Today we're taking a look at Harbor Freight's Predator 3500 power inverter generator. This generator is supposed to be a really quiet generator. And actually I shouldn't even call it a generator because it's a power inverter. And that's why it's so quiet. It's a power inverter. It's, it's going from DC to AC, back to DC again. Pretty much that's what it's doing. In that sense, this is gonna be great for running like your computers or anything that has is very sensitive to electrical. This is gonna be good for when you are out camping. And this is basically just for RVing and camping. I wouldn't use this for a job site really because when you're on a job site, you're gonna need almost as much power as you can if you're running a lot of power tools. This is from Harbor Freight. Uh, I bought it. At, I bought it for around $900 and right now they're having a sale on them for I think about 700 so I kind of got the shaft on it Nonetheless, I'm very happy so far with this. So let's take a look at it and see if this is going to be right for you So with this unit, it'll come with The unit itself and then it also comes with a RV quick clip quick lock and so this will plug into the unit and then it'll have the RV adapter, the 30 amp adapter on the back side of it. This is nice because then this doesn't pull out. It just kind of, it, do, it does a little quick lock and locks in to the uh, generator, if I can do it right, which is surprisingly, I should be able to do it. We plug that in and you have your cord. Now with the unit, it also comes with the battery. When I bought mine, they couldn't tell me if it came with the battery in or, or not. So. I finally read the box <laughs> and it says that it comes with the battery, but it does not come with oil. So when you, if you go and pick one of these up, they have at Harbor Freight, they, they sell 10W30 oil. Just pick up a quart of that. And just so you have it to add before you even start this generator and make sure that the oil is uh, topped off because they do ship this with no oil in it. This generator is, has a recoil on it and it also has electric start and it's super simple electric start you don't need a key it's very self-explanatory my wife can do it not saying that she doesn't not good at doing things but when it comes to running engines and stuff she needs a little help so this makes it very simple for her when she's camping and i am not around on here you have your 120 volt ac 30 amp plug and it also has a breaker with it and then you have a 120 plug and that's basically a 20 amp breaker on this uh for this outlet now this unit it's 3500 so that means that when we initially start this generator it ramps up to about 3500 watts whenever you plug something big into it like an ac unit or your rv trailer if something happens to start you know like a microwave those draw a lot at the initial start of it it can draw over what it's actually supposed to draw and then what it does is it it ramps up to 3500 watts and then it idles back down to a running of 3000 watts this is very nice because the honda generators don't do that the well they do but they don't do as much as they say they're going to do the honda like the honda 3000 that we had that pretty much didn't run our RV trailer. It would ramp up to 3000 watts and then idle down to 2800 watts. This unit ramps up to 3500 watts, stays at an idle of 3000 watts, which is what it should be doing. This has a two and a half gallon tank, which allows this unit to run for 11 hours, which at about 25% of its capacity, and we've had, I've had this running for, it'll run overnight. And we've had it running on 100 degree days, powering the AC at night and all the other electronics. We woke up usually with the older generator, the Honda, it would be nine o'clock, we'd turn it on at night to run the AC and everything. And then by about three o'clock in the morning, it would be off. This ran until about six o'clock in the morning and shut off which wasn't too bad because the AC pretty much kicked on the whole night because it was a hundred degrees out. So on this side, it has the recoil, which if you don't use the electric start, you can easily recoil it. And it's very simple to start. 
it has wheels. I like the wheels because the Honda 3000 doesn't come with wheels. You have to buy the wheels. It's just a pain in the butt and they charge you like 150 bucks or 200 bucks for the wheels. It's ridiculous. These have four wheels on it and it has a lock. So you can lock the wheels and you can unlock the wheels down in the front. Right here at the front of the front lower bottom is your, that's where your battery access is. So when you get the unit, you're gonna open it up, take the battery out, connect the battery, put it back in, and then you're good to go for there. That's where your battery access is. On the side here, you're going to have your oil fill access door. People say get a magnetic dipstick. I don't think you really need one because it's only gonna get certain metals. It's only gonna magnetize certain metals in here. And I'd, I've never had the need for one, never used one on any generators and they've ran fine. This is the access door. Fill up your generator with oil, check it with the dipstick and you'll be ready to go. On the top here is a fuel gauge. It's not the greatest fuel gauge, but it'll tell you if you're full, if you have a half a tank or if you're almost on empty. This has an overprotection on it. So if you do accidentally draw more than what the generator or inverter is capable of producing, it will shut down the unit. And it also has an oil protection. So if you have low oil, it'll easily shut it off and let you know that it has low oil. And it will tell you right here on the indicator light on the front of the panel, and then it'll tell you the overload if you are overloaded on the front of the panel. It also has a spot, so if you wanna ground the unit, if you feel more comfortable that you need to ground the unit, you can have a ground wire hooked to that and you can ground the unit off. This unit will also run parallel. You can run two of these generators to produce more power, which we like more power, guys. But I don't need it. Some people may need it. And a lot of people will say, well, I can use a smaller generator and then I can, I can get a 2000 watt generator and I can, you know, I can buy two of them for the price of one of these or, and I'm only gonna run certain amount of things. And then when I need to run an AC unit or something big, I'll just bring out the other generator. Do whatever you want. It, it, you're your own person. People are gonna have their own ways of doing things. This, I only want one generator. I don't wanna mess around with another one. So this is gonna do it all for me. On here, you also have a DC port where you get DC plugs so you can uh, run DC, you can run a 12 volt and it has a little eight amp DC breaker on it. On the screen, it'll tell you when we start it up, it'll tell you if you're running your 120 volts correctly. And over here is your starter switch. So you don't have a key, this is great. You don't have to worry about losing a key which on the Honda generator, I think I, I've lost my key twice on that thing because the kids like to pull them out. I don't know why they're messing with it, but they do and they get lost. But on here, you just have a starter switch. And then you also have like a eco economy mode where it throttles it down. You can have it on or off. This is nice because if you're not drawing a lot of power, it'll idle it down and can, uh, so you save gas and it's not gonna be running the unit heavily. So how do we start this? Right now we have it in the off position and all we have to do is turn the knob over to start. So to start the unit, we're just going to press the start button and hold it until it starts. And we're gonna let it idle for a couple seconds. And then we turn the knob to run. So this is about as loud as the unit gets. I can easily talk to you. It's, it's not overbearing. You can easily have this on campsites and you're not gonna get yelled at. And when this draws the 3000 watts, because right now it's not really drawing anything, it'll ramp up just a little bit, but it's, it's not very much more. So we can turn off the idle thr or the economy throttle right now, and then it'll kick it up. That's about what it's going to run if something is drying. It's not very loud. To shut the unit off, all we're gonna do is 
turn it to off. Simple as that. We don't have to shut the fuel off. We don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You just turn it to off. Stabilizer. Do you want to use stabilizer in this? If you run gasoline with no ethanol, you shouldn't really need to put stabilizer in it. Everybody has their own opinion on it. I personally, I don't really put stabilizer in this anyways because I'll, at the end of the year, I'll just run the gas out of it. I'll, I'll plug something into it, use it for a little bit, just run it out and then store it for the winter. My, my garage is heated anyway, so I don't have to worry about gas freezing or fuel lines freezing. It's good too at the end of the year. I like to drain the stuff out. I do put seafoam, I'll put seafoam in it every once in a while. Oil changes about every 100, 100 hours. I don't keep track of it too much. I'm just like, I'll probably change it twice throughout the camping year. That's good enough for me. I'm in that ballpark of 100 hours. Now, weight-wise, this only weighs about 102 pounds. It's, it's very light. Before I pick it up and strain myself, which I'm not going to, but <laughs> the Honda generator, that is a heavy beast. That weighs about 130 pounds. So we're losing 30 pounds after I got rid of the Honda generator. Here, let's unplug this before I lift it up just so we don't, don't uh, mess with any of the cords. And we'll pick it up. This is easier for me to pick it up because it's coming right off the Kubota, but here, let's set it down on the ground. Okay. Now we're gonna pick up the unit. It's gonna be very easy, simple, just like that. You, one person can easily do it. Now I say one person could easily do it because I'm a bigger guy, I can easily do it. But I would use two people, you know, guys like us, we, we, like to do everything ourselves but have two people if you have two people around use two people the handles are nice they're easy to grab pick up the generator move it to where you have to need it and uh then use it for your camping the reason why i bought this is because we have an onboard lp generator on the horse trailer tired of it breaking down and spending money on it because it seems like every year something goes wrong with it. I don't want to deal with it because it's on board. You have to tear out half of the inside stall compartment just to get and work on the generator. So I got, I was done with that. I had a Honda 3000. I was going to use that, used it for a little bit. Got a call at three o'clock in the morning and my wife was saying the Honda's not working go get a new generator in the morning. So I'm like, where can I go to get a generator? I'm like, I'll give Harbor Freight a try. I'm not afraid. Got it, love it. It's keeping up with everything. Very good generator, I highly recommend it. You can get a, uh, for $100, I think you can get like a extended replacement plan for this. I opted out on this because for me, the replacement plan stuff is just kind of a, uh, a gimmick, but for some people it works out for them for the best, but for me, I just don't like to do it. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do, comment down below. I'm Philip Bridges. If you haven't liked this video, like it, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.